Remember the brief period when smartphones had pop-up cameras? No notches, no hole punch cameras, just a clean display edge to edge. Pop-up cameras were supposed to be the answer, giving us the all-screen experience we'd always wanted. For a moment of time, it felt like the future was here. I'm gonna have to bring this phone up again, but personally, my favorite design ever was the OnePlus 7 Pro. It nailed the full screen look, and the pop-up camera was a genius way to pull it off. When you needed it, the selfie camera would quickly pop up, and then disappear after use just as fast. No notch, no cutout, it was just pure screen real estate. But here we are today, with nearly every smartphone having a hole punch or notch for a selfie camera. So if pop-up cameras gave us the perfect screen we all wanted, why did they almost disappear as quickly as they arrived? To answer that, we're going to have to take a closer look at the rise and fall of pop-up cameras, and why they're now practically extinct. The race for a full screen experience really took off after 2017, when Apple released the iPhone X with its now iconic notch. Love it or hate it, the cutout in the screen marked a turning point in smartphone design. The iPhone X was one of the first mainstream phones to reduce the bezel by so much, which pushed other brands to follow suit. Consumers had never seen a display like this, it felt futuristic, and suddenly people were craving that immersive edge-to-edge -edge look. And while Apple settled on a notch, other manufacturers weren't quite ready to make the same compromise. Instead they saw it as a challenge, create a phone with the thinnest bezels possible, without sacrificing the screen's real estate for the front-facing camera. It was a tough problem to solve. Some companies tried slimmer notches, others tried teardrop shapes, but for those serious about pushing boundaries, the solution was to hide the camera entirely. This was the dawn of the pop-up camera, a new way to deliver the all-screen design people were now demanding without any intrusive cutouts or notches disrupting the display. When you needed to take a selfie, the camera would rise up from the phone's top edge and then would go back inside the phone when you were done. For the first time since the introduction of smartphones, you had a phone that offered a completely immersive display. It was exciting, it looked futuristic, and it was honestly just fun to use. One unexpected bonus of the pop-up camera was privacy. In a world where data privacy concerns are growing, the physical barrier of a pop-up mechanism provided a layer of security that traditional front-facing cameras simply couldn't match. When the camera wasn't in use, it was literally hidden inside the phone and out of sight. For anyone a bit uneasy about a camera always staring back at them, the pop-up design was reassuring. It's the same idea that's now led to an entire market of laptop camera covers and privacy shutters. You know exactly when the lens is exposed, giving you the confidence that no background app could access it without your permission. But even as pop-up cameras gained traction, they were still a rare breed. Most smartphone companies were hesitant to dive into this tech, mainly because it introduced something unusual for a smartphone. A moving part. And while the full screen look was cool, some users felt a little nervous about having this motorized component that popped up every time you needed a selfie. As quickly as pop-up cameras rose to fame, they began to fade from the spotlight. OnePlus, one of the pioneers in this tech, and several other brands embraced this innovative feature for a brief moment, but soon after, they pivoted to hole punch cameras in their later models. So why the change? Well, it turns out that consumers found those small cutouts to be less intrusive than initially anticipated. Our eyes are actually surprisingly adaptable, and after a while, that little dot ends up blending into the display, almost disappearing from your view. But it wasn't just about aesthetics. The pop-up camera mechanism felt complex and a bit foreign compared to solid-state components that had become the norm in smartphones, sparking concerns over the long-term reliability. In contrast, solid-state parts, like the ones used in hole-punch designs, offered a sense of confidence. They're generally less prone to damage, which is crucial for the everyday user who rely on their phone for everything from video calls to selfies. With the added worries of wear and tear, it's no wonder why consumers gravitated towards simpler solutions that promise durability alongside functionality. And then there's the issue of water and dust resistance. Pop-up cameras often compromise the phone's IP rating making it significantly harder to achieve the level of protection that consumers have come to expect from flagship devices. In an era where water resistance is practically a standard requirement, pop-up cameras started to feel less practical and more like a risk. Another crucial factor to consider is how these moving parts affected battery life and internal space. The motors necessary for the pop-up mechanism inevitably added extra strain on the battery, and those motorized components also took up valuable internal space which could have been used for a bigger battery or other essential hardware. This meant while the pop-up camera offered an innovative design feature, it also came with some heavy trade-offs that simply didn't align with what consumers wanted in a reliable smartphone. 
As a result, the desire to have a full screen experience began to lose its shine due to it being less practical and reliable. If we take a look at the smartphone landscape today, it's clear that there's been a significant shift towards innovating in under-display camera technology. Brands are now laser-focused on achieving that full-screen experience without relying on any moving parts. While under-display tech is still maturing, it still offers a solid-state solution that effectively addresses many of the durability and efficiency concerns associated with pop-up cameras. Without moving components, manufacturers can create sleeker designs that will last longer. And as I briefly mentioned, Consumer attitudes have also evolved. People seem to be more comfortable with small cutouts as they no longer significantly disrupt the viewing experience. It's almost like we've all collectively adapted to these design choices. A prime example of this is Apple's innovative dynamic island feature on the iPhone, which embraces the cutout rather than shying away from it. Instead of seeing it as an obstacle, Apple has cleverly incorporated it into the user experience and turning it into what was once a design flaw into a functional feature. This shift highlights how brands are now moving forward by just integrating this technology into the phones rather than seeing it as something that needs to be removed. While pop-up cameras were a bold innovation, they were never meant to stick around for the long haul. In fact, most brands introduced them as a temporary fix, a way to keep these displays clear and interrupted until under-display technology was ready. The idea was simple. Pop-ups gave us that all-screen look without sacrificing the front camera, while brands worked behind the scenes to figure out a more permanent solution. But here's the catch. They seriously underestimated how long it would take them to make an under-display camera work efficiently. Hiding a camera under the screen turned out to be way more complicated than anticipated, from reducing pixel interference to making sure the image quality wasn't compromised. As months turned into years, companies realized that under-display tech just wasn't going to be ready anytime soon. When the tech didn't pan out as quickly as they hoped, they had to make a tough choice. They could either continue to invest in pop-up mechanisms, which had its own set of issues, or pivot back to something more reliable, screen cutouts. And while brands hoped the transition would be smooth, it wasn't that simple for a lot of users. Anyone who had experienced a truly full screen display with a pop-up camera felt a little bit disappointed when they had to switch back to a phone with the hole punch or notch. It felt like we were giving up something innovative, something that we had just gotten used to. And so pop-up cameras might mostly be gone, but they haven't vanished entirely. They're still around in certain markets where that unique motorized quirk is something that people find refreshing in a world of similar phone designs. And when you really think about it, the rise of the pop-up camera actually paved the way for a lot of what we're seeing today in phones. They pushed the industry to think harder about screen space and design, helping kickstart the under-display technology trend that we're now seeing brands chase after. It's like these phones with pop-up cameras were a testing ground, proving that people wanted a cleaner and more immersive screen, just without all of the trade-offs. So sure, pop-up cameras may have come and gone in a flash, but they left a mark on smartphone history. They were a bold experiment in giving us that all-screen experience, and even if they didn't become a long-term solution, they'll always be remembered as a time when phone design got a little more daring.